So welcome to our interview. We have with us today Colin Lego and David Rose, who've agreed to come and talk to us in Temenos about their series of workshops entitled Mistakes in Therapy. So welcome to you both. Thanks Thank for you. coming along and agreeing to be interviewed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, for I guess both of you are well known in the therapy world, but. Um, Perhaps you could say a little bit about your background, or especially in connection with this workshop, mistakes in therapy. Okay. Do you want to go first? Your I'm, background? I'm. Oh, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> go on. You make the first mistake. Okay. Yeah. Make the first mistake. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> in terms of general background, mm. I, I mean, I trained. I trained as a counsellor in the late 70s um, and it, it was a full-time postgraduate one-year course um, and I was probably in my early 30s I'd, I'd, um, I'd been a failed engineer a failed school leaver a failed engineer <clears throat> discovered full-time youth work in my early 20s and, and within a few months of working part-time decided to train as a full-time youth worker, and that was a one-year emergency training, um, and did five years as a full-time youth worker in the East End of London, um, which I loved, absolutely loved, um, but of course began to lose my hippie-length hair, you know, with the, probably with, I don't know, the strain, I'm joking about it, but it was, I mean, it was, it was a job that I was completely dedicated to. Um, and then was fortunate enough to get a job teaching in Jamaica for a couple of years. Really based on a whole series of outdoor pursuits qualifications, because I was still not well qualified. You know, I had two O-levels to my name and, and my diploma in youth work. Um, so I, 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 I got the job teaching outdoor pursuits and, and an O-level subject at the school in Jamaica. But effectively, the five years in youth work and then the two years in teaching... Um, I had had a lot of experiences of young people and sometimes parents saying to me, Colin, I've got a bit of a problem. And I became really very interested in 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 counselling. I had friends who started qualifying in it. Um, I started looking into courses. And the school counsellor at the school in Kingston, um, in Jamaica, was very supportive. He trained in the States. And so as a consequence, I'd, I'd applied to and got accepted onto a postgraduate course without a first degree, you know, at Keele. So I was really very lucky. And this was still in the early days of counselling. And there were 25 of us on the course. I think 23 were paid for by local authorities. Um, they were teachers on one year secondments to take back, to improve the quality of pastoral care in schools. And there was myself and one other colleague paying for ourselves on the course. Um, so I lived on peanuts, effectively, but was really um, absolutely dedicated to becoming a counsellor. You know, it, it was educating Rita stuff. You know, as a mature student, I lived in the library, um, completely soaked it up. You'd, sorry, this is a long biography. No, no. I'm sorry about this, John. But but anyway, as, uh, um, as a consequence... Um, I did all right, you know, in, in the exams at the end. I was really very pleased, loved the writing, and I just buried myself in existentialism and phenomenology in the library, read philosophic tracts, just loved it. Um, and then was one of only three people who got a job at the end, which was in student counselling. Mm. So that was 1977, and so effectively um, I'd been counselling in higher education from 77 right through until about 2003, the last 17 years at Sheffield. And then the last seven years I've worked independently as a counsellor and a trainer and supervisor. Mm. Um, yeah. Is that enough? That's a yeah, well, it's quite a history <laughs> calling you have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah but there is something, I mean, David will probably add to this, but when we first started talking about this, the, this particular workshop, mm. um, I remember very clearly several colleagues saying to me in the first 18 months of me working Colin you're not a therapist until you've made your first 1000 mistakes mm. so it seemed to me that was a, a phrase that was just absolutely current at that time mm. 
and our sense was now the anxiety and fear that is held by many therapists and many trainee therapists about doing anything that in any way, shape or form might come close to a mistake, the anxiety is now so high. The zeitgeist, the, the circumstances we think now are just so different mm. and so cripplingly tight. Anyway, so it was something of that, yeah. uh, that, that, that was my part of it, but Dave's also got a, you know, an important part of this mm. too. Yeah, but you've experienced them. Like a massive shift Absolutely. in the culture. Absolutely. Um, yeah. mm. Yes. Greater fear, mm. greater anxiety. Absolutely. Mm. It yeah. sounds like you've, yeah. that's something yeah. you've experienced as, yeah. as well, David. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. before I ask yeah. you about that, which I want to do, yeah. could you give us a sense of your background as oh, well? Oh, my, my history. Um, well, I, um, I first started doing uh, training. Um, for an organisation called Off the Record in Newcastle. Um, it was a sort of like Samaritans, a telephone um, thing for um, adolescents. Um, and the training was doing an encounter group. So this uh, dates it for a start. I was talking about, it must have been about 73, 74, something like that. <clears throat> um, and so I was, uh, I was doing that um, counselling for a bit. Um, I uh, dropped out of university. I hated psychology. I, I couldn't stand doing psychology. Um, worked at a local um, uh, psychiatric hospital in um, uh, uh, Newcastle um, and learnt a great deal about how not to be with people. <laughs> and I loved the writings of uh, Ronnie Lang. And so I... Um, uh, went to study with Ronnie Lang, um, but I found his course too unstructured for me. And there was a, another um, uh, writer in another group that was at the same time, um, Joe Burke and um, Morton Schatzman had a set up an organisation called the Arbors Association. And so I went down, it must have been about 75, I think, to be with them and train with them. Mm -hmm. I was with the Arbors Association, man and boy, for 11 years. Wow. Um, a tremendous um, uh, uh, training, um, uh, being in a therapeutic community, um, running a crisis centre. We had the first crisis intervention uh, team in Britain at the time. Um, we, um, I had my own um, uh, analysis. Mine was a Jungian analysis. Min for four years, minimum of um, three times a week to a maximum of six times a week, depending on, on how much money I had. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Um, so uh, pretty much by the um, uh, end of my training, um, I... I uh, it, was, it was very much a, a psychodynamic um, background, mm -hmm. um, and my certainly my first supervisors were both um, uh, Freudian analysts, um, so that was very much my background at that time, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then in 1980 I had a heart attack and had a near death experience, and that changed very much how. I saw everything in my life. Um, <clears throat> and um, I started uh, studying the North American Indian paradigm that I found something that uh, uh, spoke to my condition, as the Quakers say. Mm. Um, 